Welcome to the Northeast Shadow NPC with Clive Owen LLP, Recognition PR and the Northern Echo. In this session, we regularly talk to business leaders from different sectors about what their business outlook is like and how they think the real Bank of England Monetary Policy Committee should act on the interest rates later this week. Inflation was stable at 4% in January, but still above the Bank of England's target of 2%, so that is bound to be in the bank's thinking later this week. So let's see what our members think. Is it time for an interest rate cut? If this would be good for the regional economy or do they think that actually stability is still the way forward? I'll be surprised if there's any votes for a uh, raise in the interest rates, but we'll see. And I'm starting with uh, Nicola Bellaby from uh, our partners Clive Owen LLP. Nicola, what are your clients telling you about how business is at the moment in the northeast i think they were getting a little bit more confident caroline because raw material prices had stabilized but they were really hoping for some changes in the budget that would help them and there was very little in the budget to help which was was quite a surprise really there was a reduction in employees national insurance but nothing for employers and and that might take a little bit of pressure off wage inflation but at the same time we've got that big increase coming in in national minimum wage and whilst that's probably not a bad thing on in itself it pushes all salaries up because if you've got someone who needs to be paid at a higher level than that is it that the clients are finding that all the wages are still getting really pushed up um and uh, you know and that's expensive disappointing that there was no reduction in corporation tax i think a lot of the clients were hoping for that they really thought that would be coming but but nothing there um so disappointment in the budget and it's just we're, we're just in a bit of a limbo at the minute i think waiting to see what happens with the election um when when that comes in so yeah pretty pretty static all pretty a bit static, static at the minute, yeah, i think it's going to be a little bit like that uh, heading into mm. electioneering time carl you work with a lot of different clients um how, how what are you hearing out there did did the budget actually help anybody and is the election in people's minds um don't think the budget helped anybody specifically i don't think there was any out and out winners where you could clearly turn around and say they are significantly better off or they're going to benefit significantly from the budget um i think taking sort of the budget to one side um you know our clients and uh, and certainly our business and, and our industry is feeling a lot more buoyant than it was two, three, four months ago. That is obviously as a result of inflation continuing to fall. The presumption then that interest rates will fall over that shorter term uh, compared to where we were obviously six, 12 months ago. And therefore that's had a bit of a, a rally in investment markets since Q4 of last year. And obviously when clients' investment portfolios have increased as they have over the last three to six months now, naturally clients are happier. Uh, it, it, it's more encouraging for us as a business because uh, it directly uh, impacts our revenue streams. So as an industry and as a business, yes, it's more buoyant. What came out of the budget for our type of client, you know, we're, we're relatively fortunate that we look after clients with um, a, a decent level of net worth. And, uh, you know, a lot of what came out of the budget doesn't seem to benefit them. I'm not saying that it should have, um, but it, it certainly seems to be um, turning the screw a little bit on those people in terms of the changes to, you know, the holiday let market, capital gains tax uh, allowances reducing again further from April. Um, there's certainly nothing immediate to shout about moving forward, I would say. And Tim, from Excite Architecture, we've just heard Carl use the word buoyant and Nicholas say there's more confidence. What's it like in your sector? What's it like in construction? Well, um, it's not great, to be perfectly honest. Uh, last week, uh, there was the news that um, a mid-scale regional contractor, Sergo Construction, went into administration after a uh, court judgment, effectively, uh, with, with with what looks like a loss of all jobs. That follows Toland and Metnor last year. And I think what that 
uh, reads across for me anyway is that um, this sort of mass financial stress in the sector, which is beginning to find its way out. Um, investment is not being great. There are all sorts of other stories about wobbles um, over the past 12 months or so that uh, leaves the, uh, the sector construction itself in quite a difficult situation. Um, I think that there's potential bright lights or brighter lights uh, in development. There's a keenness to um, get uh, development working and um, that of course will need construction to support it. But it's still being driven after inflation and raw material um, uh, price rises and so on. It's still being driven by a um, uh, least cost is best sort of uh, mentality. And that actually is, um, well, it's beginning to play out in, uh, in, in these administrations that we're seeing highest levels over the last 12 months in the construction industry for, for quite a few years. So it's, it's a bit of a uh, mixed picture between development and construction. Um, but there is nobody I'm speaking to uh, who's got very much confidence about the rest of 24 being anything other than flat. So not, not, quite, so, not quite so upbeat. Uh, Donna and Populous, you're um, global specialist recruiters. Um, how how is recruitment? Um, obviously, the um, the minimum wage won't affect the type of people you recruit. recruit but no. do you find that that actually pushes up wages all the way through to the top level, or, or does that not really have an effect? For for, for our type of um, uh, candidates, it doesn't really have an effect. I mean, in the recruitment the recruitment sector in general, I would say that twenty twenty three was challenging. But um, transaction volumes across the sector remained uh, high and um, robust. And indeed, UK recruitment in general grew um, for ourselves. We, we grew and we've invested. Um, we're getting more staff. And I think that's indicative of a tight labour market in the sectors in which we work. So um, that that's a stressor and that's um that puts inflationary pressures on on wages which we're still seeing uh, the, the slightly calmer than um through last year but we're still seeing pressure on those wages in in our um the sectors in which we work so you know pharma is fairly steady um in general in investment terms they're still working through their stock um issues uh, on the back of covid um the pharma construction market is a uh, buoyant for us. Um, High-end manufacturing and automation is steady. Um, aerospace, we're seeing um, investment is, is steady again. And in automotive, particularly in um, EVs in which we work, uh, that's very buoyant. But all of these sectors um, in which we work are experiencing skill shortages. So there's going to be no let up on inflationary pressures on 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 wages um and we've seen the le recent um the, the recent uh, uh figures on wage increases and they're still above the cpi index so uh from our perspective um buoyant our clients are investing um but they're being held back by skills shortages or inflationary pressures Yes, no, we've yeah, heard that yeah, uh, quite a few yeah. times, those words, skills shortages. Uh, Martin, Martin Pullen from FRP Advisory, you tend to see the other side of businesses. I know Graham always says to you, we don't want you to be booming because that's not a good <laughs> sign uh, in the nicest possible way. But have things quietened down at all for you? Uh, no, so this is, I mean, I've been doing this role 23 years and this is a real peak period for us in terms of the number of businesses reaching out for help construction uh picking up on what tim has said absolutely um we have had the issue for a number of years now where you know uh cheapest is best um procurement policies with uh local authorities including you know commercial enterprises have, have dictated that and that has meant and you know anecdotally you'll hear uh many businesses in the construction sector uh, bemoaning the fact that you know, seeing losing contracts for prices that seem uneconomic and unrealistic, 
Um, and typically, you know, those are the businesses that end up at our door that have, you know, pitched in to, to buy in turnover and, and just don't deliver a margin. Um, you've got to think that construction, you know, is a is a bit very, you know, it's a big industry. It's a broad church. I mean, you've, you know, it's it affects everyone from the businesses, you know, uh, dealing with uh, manufacturing and installation of kitchens and bathrooms and and lighting, uh, you know, trade counters, architects, surveyors. Um, and I think certainly for the last 12 months, what we've been seeing in that sector is it's the delays in new projects that have been a major challenge. Some of these, pro- you know, some of these projects, as, as Tim will tell you, you know, take years in the planning. Uh, and even at SME level, you know, you can know about them for, you know, you're pricing it a year and a half, two years before that. I think we've had a, a perfect storm. Yes, there were some supply chain issues which delayed projects. There was the, you know, wage inflation, skills uh, shortages, which, yes, is, is true. But some of these projects were priced on, you know, two years ago, uh, cost of borrowing, when many of these projects now at, you know, borrowing rates we've seen increase significantly. And because of the risk in the sector, you know, cost of borrowing again increases. And that means that a number of these projects that have been promised and promised and businesses have sort of of kind of hedged the bets. Okay, well, it is going to come. It's not lost revenue. It's delayed revenue. By the time they've come and they're expecting to proceed, actually, some of them are uneconomic. Um, so yeah, certainly construction has been a sector we've seen uh, a, a lot of activity in. Surgeco is a, a case that our Newcastle team are dealing with, um, and that's a challenge. You know, we don't have enough houses in the UK. Um, we have, you know, we do have a, a highly skilled, very competent construction sector. We've got great professionals. I think in the UK generally, if you look at how we, how we perform in the UK compared to some of our European counterparts, we actually do pretty well. Um, but I think that lack of certainty on investment, uh, the lack, the uncertainty in the environment generally is meaning that that sector is, well, it's, it's definitely, if you look at it is as a sector as a whole, it is, it is contracting. Um, and, you know, there's always, there's always a, a downturn at some point, but you hope that you're going to have one bad year in eight or nine. And it, I think the construction sector feels like it's having a bad year in every four or five, despite the fact that if you look at the home building side of it, we definitely need to construct more. The only one of the little comment I'll add to that, if we're talking about construction, is still there is a boom in industrial sheds. So there's a shortage of of that type of building in the northeast, and and I believe in the UK generally. Um, so you know there is a desire to construct more, whether it be residential or commercial. It's capitalised, it's funding those at the moment. That is is more of a challenge, I think. Well, keeping on that theme, actually, John Cartwright, you're a board member of Constructing Excellence Northeast. Do you um, do you concur with what um, Tim and Martin have told us about the sector? Yeah, I think everything that they've said is, is, is absolutely spot on. I think that I've got a couple of hats that I wear, obviously one with Construct and Excellence, and uh, my main job, I'm head of construction and built environment at Hartlepool College. So, you know, the, the construction industry, we need 225,000 jobs creating over the next couple of years, where they're going to come from, um, tier one contractors, Sometimes don't invest in skills. It's mainly the small, um, the SME guys and girls that go around and invest and pick up their skills. But being in this industry for, for 25 years, being in education for 25 years, um, I think construction in education, we generally follow what goes on in the sector. So if the sector's absolutely buoyant, then we've got, we're just following them up the hill in terms of recruitment. But looking at all of the other colleges, if I represent them around the Northeast, Everybody still wants to be a bricklayer because they, that, there's that much money being earned on sites as bricklayers, albeit despite their salaries have been stopped recently because some sites aren't stopping, uh, sorry, aren't starting. Um, so there's lots of mixed messages that we're getting from what's going on out there and uh, within the sector. Um, I think you, you, uh, Martin and Tim touched on some things regards uh, merchants and suppliers. Some merchants I speak to are absolutely buoyant. Some merchants I speak to you know, the, 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 there's not many um, extensions getting built around the region. Um, but despite that, we've got lots of infrastructure projects. You look at Hartlepool, you look at Darling, you look at Stock, uh, Middlesbrough and Sunderland, all getting new train stations or renovations of train stations. And um, we've still got the work that's going on on the A1. So, you know, I think in terms of skills, we are still recruiting. We still, um, you know, supplying the chain that's out there. That's you know, what's going on. But... I think what Tim mentioned there, we've got had some sad news in the region um, regards Sergo. I think it was 46 people displaced there. Adding on to the fact that we had uh, Toll and, and Metnar last year, 400 people displaced there. So we hopefully that we can get, because um, I know Construct Excellence has a jobs board, 
where we helped the 400 people or best part of the 400 people last year to try and get placed within some of our uh, members in and around the region. Um, but it's so it's 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 up and down. It's up and down. Yeah, that was fascinating insight into construction there. Now then, I'm going to ask you all just to raise your hands before I quickly go around again and ask you why you voted that way. Um, I don't think I need to ask this, but does anybody think that interest rates should go up this week? I'll take that as a no. Um, what about um, cut, a cut in interest rates? Do you think the time's right yet? Ah, so Tim thinks the time's right for a, an interest rate cut. Um, so everybody else, I think if you're raising your hands for uh, to remain as we are. Yep, right. Well, I'll come to you first, Tim, then, uh, the dissenting voice. Uh, why do you think the time might just be right for a cut now? Yeah, um, I hadn't realised it was going to be on my own. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there are two, two real reasons. One is uh, rather myopically, I'm thinking about the context of the construction industry itself. And uh, I'm going to suggest a quarter of a percent would be a nod in the right direction. There are predictions uh, that the rate is going to fall over <clears throat> the next six months anyway. And um, then uh, further into next year. So I think it would be a good signal uh, to try and encourage a bit more investment, a bit more uh, green light um, uh, on the sector. I realize that that might have some damaging effects elsewhere, but um, there is there is an overriding sense that we are, a bit static as a, an economy generally in the UK. And uh, it feels to me anyway, uh, that, that we might be falling behind um, uh, overall as well as in the sector. So that, that's why. Nicola, you don't feel it's time yet to uh, to change. Why is that? No, but I can, I can see exactly where Tim's coming from at the same time. And there's always pros and cons, isn't there? But I still think we need to encourage stability and um, whilst inflation's higher than it than it should be. So that's why I think interest rates should stay the same really going forward. Because there's tell. a lot of uncertainty in the, you know, with the election, with the budget not delivering any change. So that's why I think keep it the same. And Carl, your thoughts? Yeah, I, again, I, I do agree with Tim in the, in the fact that I think you know, it would be lovely to be able to reduce interest rates and, and, and ease that financial pressure on, on businesses and individuals. So I agree with the emotional side of, of reducing them. I do think it will be right to reduce them later on, on in the year. But I go back to sort of the, the principles of science and economics around why we put interest rates up in the first place, and that was to try and curb demand. Um, and I do think we need to let this settle at the current level for a bit longer so that it, it it becomes known and felt that this is the norm. I think if we get back into that reducing interest rates, people will suddenly think, oh, things are going to get great again and go out spending again. And I think we're in danger then of inflation suddenly going back the other way. So I, I do think for UK PLC, the long-term benefit is to stay static for now, as Nicola's uh, just alluded to. But, you know, emotionally, it would be lovely to have a, a reduction um, so we all feel a bit better off. But it's that short-term pain, long-term gain um, is, is my personal view at the moment. Um, and uh, Donna, your thoughts on uh, stability? I abs absolutely agree with um, Carl um, and appreciate that desire for um, some some um, push into the economy, but with inflationary pressures still there in in in, in the wage pr pressures, um, I, I I really think we need to keep the current interest rate. Um, many of our clients are international firms, and they're looking for certainty and consistency when making big investments in facilities um, and people in the UK. So. Um, if we want to grow these science-based industries or secure investment uh, from multinational firms of any variety, we do need to give them the ability to plan long term. And I, I, I fear that um, if we do um, uh, decrease uh, interest rates now, we'll get into um, 
a, a, a rise again um, in inflation later in the year, which is already um, predicted. So right now we need to send a signal that we're a steady ship, um, that the markets have settled. Otherwise, uh, I think we'll find that other countries will attract the jobs and investment um, from, from these multinational companies. Thanks, John. Uh, and Martin, your thoughts? Oh, there's a lot of reverb there. I think that's on to me. Um, yeah, I agree with uh, everything that's been said. Um, this is probably the most marginal decision I've had to date. Um, I take on board everything that everyone's said. We can, obviously, we have seen that the increased inflation has had the effect that we wanted it to. I think sort of one in, no, I think it's 60% of households are spending less uh, now and expect to spend less this year than they did last year. I think we've got a three in 10 of households could not uh, could not cope with, a, I think it's an eight, £850 one-off shock bill. That is concerning. Um, a fall in interest rates feels like it's coming to me. Uh, but for the, for the time being, I think we hold our nerve. And I think as stable as we can be, for me, I think we're waiting for the next election before anything uh, more significant will happen. Uh, and it feels like that's the right thing to do. I'm, I'm, you know, the budget was a, well, we've still seen the increase in, in, in tax rates because of the uh, the kind of banding creep, as it were. But I think really it'll be interesting to see where we get to at the end of the year. Uh, the biggest single impact from all the economic data I've seen on the UK economy is our Brexit decision, which I'm seeing reverberate through most of the businesses I have, uh, I am dealing with. It's affected every sector, and I don't think I've seen anything positive that's come out of it. And I'd be keen to uh, to see how we might seek to somehow reset our relationship with, with uh, the EU uh, in some way, shape or form that could actually try and get us away from this sort of stagnant growth that we have in the UK. And that's a whole nother programme there, Martin, I think. <laughs> uh, and John, finally, um, you're still remaining as interest rates as they were, unlike Tim. Um, do you actually... Do you actually see them um, being cut in the near future? Yeah, I think I think everybody on the call is fully with Tim and want what Tim want. They are, that that would be nice. Um, but I think in terms of what everybody else has said at this moment in time, a bit of stability um, and stay exactly where we are. But I can see exactly what Martin said there in the future, in the near future, and it's up the election we can that would maybe drop a bit. Thank you. And thank you, everybody. Not quite unanimous this month. I think that's the first time for a little while we haven't been unanimous. But thanks to everybody on the North East Shadow MPC for your views. And let's see what the Bank of England do later this week.